This is video number one for the sample exam number three for Math 107. The first few questions on the exam concern definitions and the proper way to write the polynomials. Nothing creative is required here for number one. Write the general expression for polynomial in x, that means x is going to be the independent variable, and of degree five. So it's is a polynomial of, of a single variable x, and the highest exponent on the x is 5. That's what degree 5 means. And you can write it in ascending or descending order. Usually you write it in descending order. So I'm going to rewrite this again. You'll see it in the box right afterwards. The polynomial in x, instead of using f, you typically use p for polynomial. Now, x to the fifth is the highest power, and a is a coefficient. So use a for the number that will go in front, and you give a subscript 5 to tag it with the 5 exponent and just continue. It should look just exactly like this. If you have problems writing this, uh, you shouldn't see me, okay? So a is a placeholder for the polynomial, but you, okay, but you got an, each a can have a different value, so you give it a subscript to match the exponent. So you keep counting down a2, x squared, then there's an a1, x, and you don't have to write the one on the x, and then the constant is a0. All right? That's exactly what you should do, and that's what it has to look like, just exactly like that. Shouldn't be any problem there. For the next question, you need to write the general expression for a rational function. And again, the answer has to look just like this. So uh, for a rational function, you can use r, or you can use f, f of x, or you could say r of x. Some people do that. I generally do the f of x. And a rational function the word ratio, rational, means ratio. See that ratio right there? It means it's written as a fraction. And in the numerator is a polynomial. And you can write it like that. Whoops. And in the denominator is also a polynomial. And that is how a rational function is written. Now for three, you have to write a definition. Now some people have trouble doing this. Uh, just get in, in your mind what it is and then write it as a complete sentence. And if all the best you can do is memorize this, then memorize it. All right? What is the root of a polynomial? The root of a polynomial is a value of x. So it's a value of x for which or at which the polynomial is 0 equals 0. So any x that when you put it into this expression here, if you had a, a, this was your expression, if you put that value of x in here and the answer was 0, that value of x would be called a root of the polynomial. For number 4, you need to know what the vertical asymptote of a rational function is. I used r of x there, but say here's your rational function. I'll use f of x and it has a polynomial in the numerator, has a polynomial in the denominator. Okay, the vertical asymptote is a value of x, okay, for which the denominator, that is q of x, equals zero. At this value of x, the function is not defined as x gets closer and closer to this vertical asymptote, the function approaches either plus infinity or minus infinity. In other words, it blows up. So that's your vertical asymptote. It is a value of x. It's a value of x for which the denominator, q of x, is 0. All right, I think you should be able to get all that. The next one, this horizontal asymptote, is a little harder to understand. The horizontal asymptote is the long-term behavior of the function. Say your uh, function is, uh, is the uh, behavior of some stock price in some company. And if you know those, if you look at the, at the graphs of stock prices, they look like they wiggle up and down all over the place. They look almost like sawtooths. But if you watch them over a long term, many of them just settle down. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how the function behaves how the function behaves, how the rational function behaves as x gets bigger and bigger. 
So as x approaches plus or minus infinity. That's the hor that's and the horizontal asymptote is the value of the function approaches. Let's say we have a function like this, and it goes up here and it does a bunch of stuff, but then after a while it kind of coasts out here. You see? Here x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And let's say this is value is 10. Then in the long range, this function settles down to 10. Interestingly enough, these rational functions do things like that. So the horizontal asymptote is the value of the function. It's this value up here, the value of the function as x approaches plus or minus infinity, or you could say as x gets very, very large. Now you're given a polynomial, uh, in this case, so this polynomial right here, so you'll be given one. It won't be exactly that one, but it will be similar. Then you have to write it in descending powers of x. That means you write it so that the, the term with the largest exponent, in this case 4x to the 6th, is first. Then smaller and smaller, just similar to what you did on the first problem. So you just arrange this polynomial. You should always arrange polynomials like this, either ascending or descending order. All right. Now you need to know what the degree of the polynomial is. In this case, it's 6. It is the largest exponent. That's the degree. What is the leading coefficient? The leading term is the one with the um, highest exponent. So the leading term is 4x to the 6th. All right. But the leading coefficient, a coefficient is the number multiplying the x. So the leading coefficient here is just 4. How many roots does a polynomial have? If the polynomial has is of degree 10, it has 10 roots. In this case, this polynomial is degree 6, and so it has 6 roots. Right. And now 10, what is the maximum number of turning points? The maximum number of turning points is 1 less than the degree. So in this case, the degree is 6, the maximum num number of turning points is 5. Now in this case, you're given a polynomial, and you need to test by long division and the remainder theorem if x equal 1 is a root. Now to do this, you divide the polynomial using long polynomial division, as it says here, by x minus 1. If this root was supposed to be negative 2, okay, here's what you divide by, x minus 1. Okay? If you want to test x equals, say, minus 5 to see if that's a root, you divide by x minus a negative 1, negative 5, which would be x plus 5. So there's a little difference on sign there. But what we're going to do here is divide that polynomial. So what you have to know for this problem is you have to get this idea that when you test for a root, you divide by x minus the potential root. And then the next part is how to do polynomial division and then to recognize the result. So this has um, a degree 5 polynomial, but not all the terms are there. Some people have different ways of doing it. Here's what I do. I do a brute force way. I go and write in zeros for everything I don't have. So I have every single term, x to the fifth, x to the fourth. Now I need x to the third, but if I put a zero there, it's going to work out better for me. Okay, 4x squared. Hmm. And then we have a zero for the x and a minus 7. So now I have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, of course, and the 0 term, and the constant term. And that works out a lot better for me to keep things straight. Then I'm dividing by x minus 1. So here we go with long division. You look at the first term that you're dealing with here, 3x to the 5th, and you say, what would it take to turn x into 3x to the 5th? Well, multiplication by 3x to the 4th would do that. So you put that up here, but now you go to multiply, you multiply all of the terms. 3x to the 4th times x to the 5th is 3x to the 5th. That was my plan. I'm done. Good. Okay. Now I still have to go x to the 4th times negative 1, which is minus x to the 4th. See that? So that's the first step. Now I need to subtract. I have to subtract this entire line right here from the line above it. All right? Now you can go through and put different signs. Let me put them in different color. So this is really a minus, and this minus turns into a plus. However, if you mark up your pages with minus and plus, 
you can get a, into a mistake. It's much better just to leave the signs alone and remember what you're doing. All right, I can't erase that, so I've got to deal with it. Let's go back to blue. So 3x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth is 0, and that was the plan. Now over here, I have 0x to the fourth plus 1x to the fourth. That just gives me 1x to the fourth, okay, because remember it was subtraction. And now I bring down this 0. Now you see why I put them there, so my columns line up. Now I go here again, and I say, what would it take to turn this leading x into x to the fourth? Multiplication by x cubed. I put that up there. Then multiply everything. This becomes x to the fourth minus 1. I'll put the 1 there just for kicks. x cubed. Okay. Again, I'm subtracting. x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is 0. Then 0 minus a negative 1 is the same as a positive 1. So I put x x, by the way, I don't know what happened there, cubed, bring down the next term, which is 4x squared. All right? What would it take to turn x into x cubed? Multipli multiplication by x squared. So put that up there, multi multiply, and I get x cubed minus 1x squared. Now I subtract, a leading terms go away. In this case, I have 4x squared minus a negative 1x squared, that becomes 5x squared, and now I bring down that 0x, and what would it turn, take to turn x into 5x squared? That would be multiplication by 5x. So I have 5x squared minus 5x. Okay, subtracting, the, this leading term goes away, and then I have 0 minus a negative 5, which is 5x, minus 7. All right, I would have to multiply this by 5, so 5 times 5x, 5 times x gives me 5x. 5 times minus 1 gives me negative 5. Okay, 5x's go away and I have minus 5, uh, minus a negative 5, which is the same as plus, so I have minus 2. Right. So in this problem, you had to recognize what to divide by, you have to carry out the long division, and now you have to recognize the answer. If the remainder equals 0, then x equal 1 hmm, is a root. Okay. In this case, though, the remainder was not 0, so because it's negative 2, so x equal 1 is not a root.